Hey guys, um, this is episode one <laughs> of Spiritual Warfare, and it's called Spiritual Warfare Basics, because um, I just felt really convicted to make sure that we cover all the bases in this thing, because if you have one or two little things you don't understand, you may not be being effective. So um, this is going to be a real simple, quick one, but it's just the baseline information of um, Spiritual Warfare. So um, first of all, why do we want to study this? Um, 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So we need to study um, his ways as well as God's ways so that we can war effectively. Okay, Understand that there are two realms. One is physical and one is spiritual. So 1 Corinthians 15.40 says, There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies, but the glory of the celestial one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Colossians 1.16 says, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities, all things were created through his, through him and for him. Romans 8.5 For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Understand that only a person that is saved under the new covenant can warn the Spirit. Okay? Because they have access to the discernment that the Holy Spirit gives. Um, essentially, being in covenant is being a Christian. But I'll do a video on that later just to make sure all the bases are covered of understanding what that means. Um, so only Christians can war in the Spirit. Okay. Now Matthew 26, 28 says, For this is the blood of my new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So here's a little chart and it has the natural realm and the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm has two different sections. Okay, so natural realm. All men on earth live in the natural realm. The earth is divided into several natural kingdoms with physical kings that rule over the people. And um, kingdoms of this world are under Satan's power. Okay, we'll, we'll explore that later with scriptures and all of that. But this is just the baseline information. Spiritual realm. Okay, there's two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of Satan. And as a point of rebellion, I refuse to capitalize the word Satan. Because I don't want to give him the respect of being a proper noun. So <laughs> that's just my little thing. <laughs> so the kingdom of Satan. Um, that includes Satan, the spiritual beings such as demons and stuff. Um, the spiritual forces of evil, all the people that are living in sin, and all that rebel against God. Satan's kingdom will not last forever, only the consequences for those that partook, and Satan, they will have eternal fire. The kingdom of the kingdom started in the rebellion when Lucifer wanted to take over God's kingdom. Okay, so on God's side, the kingdom of God, hopefully you're on that side <laughs> with me. Um, this includes God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the spiritual beings such as angels, all men who um, live in righteousness, obedience to God's word. Um, these are spiritual forces for good. Um, they exist inside each saved person and the true church. The future manifestation will be the kingdom of God, okay? And then the kingdom of God existed. Oh, here's the spiritual war. You're going to have to look up these verses on your own, but I'm putting them in here. They're in black. Um, so the spiritual war. It's invisible to most. Some people can see, you know, behind the veil. Um, now, spirits don't, ha don't have flesh and bones, okay? Okay. So it's a spiritual war and there's things going on around you that if you could see, you would be like, what? <laughs> okay, number two, it involves all mankind, whether we are aware of that or not. Um, 
The struggle occurs in the spirit world or the realm of the spirit world. So remember, we talked about the physical and the spiritual. That war is happening in the spiritual. Number four, the spirit world is within and around man as well as other places. It's multidimensional. So there's a social battle between the believer and the world. There's a personal battle between the flesh and the spirit. There's a supernatural battle between the believer and evil spiritual powers. Um, Christians are freed from the enemy through Jesus Christ and on the winning team. But the battle still rages on daily until Satan is bound. Number six, team Satan comes to earth to kill, steal, destroy, and lead astray. Um, number seven, Jesus comes so that all who choose him can have life abundantly on earth and eternal life after death or after this dispensation, whichever comes first. Uh, number eight, because Satan tempted Adam and Eve into sin, sin entered the physical realm. Number nine, sin created a rift or an opposition between Satan and the woman and Satan's seed, which includes the forces of evil, and her seed, all humans born of humans, which were of the Lord and good prior to the choice of sin. Number 10, because of sin, man deserves separation from God and eternal death, but God is holy and cannot, because, because, um, God is holy and he cannot rightly interact with sinners. So God sent his son Jesus to die once for all for all men's sins so that they could be reunited with God in righteous standing and have everlasting life, life in heaven. Um, of course, you have to choose Christ. Not It's not just like, well, he died for everybody and, and you know, I'm everybody. <laughs> you have to choose and you have to commit. Number 11. The other thing that Jesus did for us in his death, burial, and resurrection or conquering was conquering death and all sin is that by his righteousness, sac by foo -foo, number 11, <laughs> the other thing that Jesus did for us in his death, burial, and resurrection or conquering of death and all sin is that by his righteous sacrifice, he defeated the works of Satan. Number 12, Satan still has troops on the ground and he will not receive his final defeats until after he is chained for a thousand years in hell and then he is thrown into the lake of fire forever and ever. He will return to the earth through the Antichrist to rule in his kingdom in perfect evil during the great tribulation. Okay, so these are a few facts that might be of interest to kind of stir your mind on this topic. And Job 1 and 2 points out that many circumstances in life, whether physical, spiritual, emotional, mental, financial, interpersonal, can be influenced negatively by Team Satan. Ephesians 6 reminds us that for the Christian, this battle is a real war and we need to prepare like real soldiers. Number three is preparing includes knowing the tactics of the enemy and being able to fight back with authority and full faith in the armor of God, which is Ephesians 6. Um, lack of education or naivety does not negate the fact that the war is on 24-7. So 2 Corinthians 2 and Hosea 4. And then the most important thing to know, um, the most important thing is knowing to whom you belong and that you are safe and that he has the ability to keep you safe at all times, John 10. Now in the next video, um, we're gonna do a deep dive into the full armor of God. If you wanna pre-read and get that fresh in your mind. Um, in the other videos, we will dig into Team God, Team Satan, a few Bible studies will help us understand the fight we're in, some predictions about what's coming up in our future based on um, Bible study. Um, to understand like how to war effectively and um, if you are not having success, what strategies to try. So there's gonna be quite a few videos um, if you can just hang tight and just you know kind of plug along with me along this whole thing. I would recommend listening to them in the order that they're presented because they kind of build on one another. And some of these like this are gonna be real quick and some of them are going to be very deep and they're gonna take a lot of study Whichever one works uh, that day, that's that's the one we're doing. <laughs>
So um, I um, hope this helps a little bit. If you have just you know started getting into this concept, um, if not, just keep praying and um, study and wait for next time when we get into the series study about the full armor of God. We're going to go really into the Greek and get into um, a lot of parallel verses and stuff. So um, I hope you um, are liking this so far and uh, see you next time.